Christ crucified. A sermon. Number 7, 8. Delivered on Sabbath morning, February 11, 1855, by the Rev. C. H. Spurgeon. At Exeter Hall, Strand. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1 23, 24. What contempteth God poured upon the wisdom of this world? How hath he brought it to naught, and made it appear as nothing? He has allowed it to word out its own conclusions, and prove its own folly. Men boasted that they were wise, they said that they could find out God to perfection, and in order that their folly might be refuted once and forever, God gave them the opportunity of so doing. He said, Worldly wisdom, I will try thee. Thou sayest that thou art mighty, that thine intellect is vast and comprehensive, that thine eye is keen, and thou canst find all secrets. Now, behold, I try thee, I give thee one great problem to solve. Here is the universe, stars make its canopy, fields and flowers adorn it, and the floods roll o'er its surface. My name is written therein, the invisible things of God may be clearly seen in the things which are made. Philosophy, I give thee this problem, find me out. Here are my works, find me out. Discover in the wondrous world which I have made, the way to worship me acceptably. I give thee space enough to do it, there are data enough. Behold the clouds, the earth, and the stars. I give thee time enough, I will give thee four thousand years, and I will not interfere, but thou shalt do as thou wilt with thine own world. I will give thee men enough, for I will make great minds and vast, whom thou shalt call lords of earth, thou shalt have orators, thou shalt have philosophers. Find me out, O reason, find me out, O wisdom. Find me out, if thou canst, find me out unto perfection, and if thou canst not, then shut thy mouth forever, and then will I teach thee that the wisdom of God is wiser than the wisdom of man, yea, that the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And how did the wisdom of man work out the problem? How did wisdom perform her feat? Look upon the heathen nations, there you see the result of wisdom's researches. In the time of Jesus Christ, you might have beheld the earth covered with the slime of pollution, a Sodom on a large scale, corrupt, filthy, depraved, indulging in vices which we dare not mention, reveling in lust too abominable even for our imagination to dwell upon for a moment. We find the men prostrating themselves before blocks of wood and stone, adoring ten thousand gods more vicious than themselves. We find, in fact, that reason wrote out her lines with a finger covered with blood and filth, and that she forever cut herself out from all her glory by the vile deeds she did. She would not worship God. She would not bow down to him who is, clearly seen, but she worshipped any creature, the reptile that crawled, the viper, everything might be a god, but not, forsooth, the god of heaven. Vice might be made into a ceremony, the greatest crime might be exalted into a religion, but true worship she knew nothing of. Poor reason. Poor wisdom. How art thou fallen from heaven, like Lucifer, thou son of the morning, thou art lost, thou hast written out thy conclusion, but a conclusion of consummate folly. After that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Wisdom had had its time, and time enough, it had done its all, and that was little enough, it had made the world worse than it was before it stepped upon it, and, now, says God, foolishness shall overcome wisdom, now ignorance as ye call it, shall sweep away science, now, humble, childlike faith shall crumble to the dust all the colossal systems your hands have piled. He calls his armies. Christ puts his trumpet to his mouth, and up come the warriors, clad in fishermen's garb, with the brogue of the Lake of Galilee, poor humble mariners. Here are the warriors, O wisdom, that are to confound thee, these are the heroes who shall overcome thy proud philosophers, these men are to plant their standard upon thy ruined walls, and bid them to fall forever. These men and their successors are to exalt a gospel in the world which ye may laugh at as absurd, which ye may sneer at as folly, but which shall be exalted above the hills, and shall be glorious even to the highest heavens. Since that day, God has always raised up successors of the apostles, not by any lineal descent, but because I have the same role and charter as any apostle, and am as much called to preach the gospel as Paul himself, if not as much owned by the conversion of sinners, yet, in a measure, blessed of God, and, therefore, here I stand, foolish as Paul might be, foolish as Peter, 
or any of those fishermen, but still with the might of God I grasp the sword of truth, coming here to preach. Christ and him crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Before I enter upon our text, let me very briefly tell you what I believe preaching Christ and him crucified is. My friends, I do not believe it is preaching Christ and him crucified, to give people a batch of philosophy every Sunday morning and evening, and neglect the truths of this holy book. I do not believe it is preaching Christ and him crucified, to leave out the main cardinal doctrines of the word of God, and preach a religion which is all a mist and a haze, without any definite truths whatever. I take it that man does not preach Christ and him crucified, who can get through a sermon without mentioning Christ's name once, nor does that man preach Christ and him crucified, who leaves out the Holy Spirit's work, who never says a word about the Holy Ghost, so that indeed the hearers might say, we do not so much as know whether there be a Holy Ghost. And I have my own private opinion, that there is no such thing as preaching Christ and him crucified, unless you preach what nowadays is called Calvinism. I have my own ideas, and those I always state boldly. It is a nickname to call it Calvinism. Calvinism is the gospel, and nothing else. I do not believe we can preach the gospel if we do not preach justification by faith without works, not unless we preach the sovereignty of God in his dispensation of grace, nor unless we exalt the electing, unchangeable, eternal, immutable, conquering love of Jehovah, nor, I think, can we preach the gospel unless we base it upon the peculiar redemption which Christ made for his elect and chosen people, nor can I comprehend a gospel which lets saints fall away after they are called, and suffers the children of God to be burned in the fires of damnation, after having believed. Such a gospel I abhor. The gospel of the Bible is not such a gospel as that. We preach Christ and him crucified in a different fashion, and to all gainsay as we reply, we have not so learned Christ. There are three things in the text, first, a gospel rejected, Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness, secondly, a gospel triumphant, unto those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, and thirdly, a gospel admired, it is to them who are called, the power of God and the wisdom of God.